So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over different jobs that you can be doing on set. Just, I know you kind of know them, but let's review them. Okay, so what, what jobs can we be doing on set that will use, we'll use the skills that we already have? Director. Yeah. Now, there's also, what else is there? With director, who's bringing in the business? Executive producer. If you're entrepreneurial, you could be an executive producer by bringing in the business. That's where you're selling the concept and you're selling the directors and you're bringing in the business to the production company. Executive producers can own the production company or they can work for a production company. Then there is producers. There's many different kinds of producers. There's UPMs, that would be TV shows and feature films. Um, you, could, you can say that we have UPMs on um, uh, commercials too, but then that usually goes equivalent to the production supervisor job. So producer, what does producer do on set? Producer is interfacing with the director and all the executives and making sure that we are delivering what was promised as well as being responsible for the budget and making sure everything comes in on budget, right? Okay, so that's what the producer does. So if you're good at working with people, if you're good with numbers, if you're good with taking a lot of responsibility, oh, you got a lot of responsibility as a producer, you might love to be a producer. Then you got production supervisor. Production supervisor is the one that takes that budget and make sure that we're hitting all the numbers correctly on the art department, on the sound department, on the VTR department, on the camera. They're crunching the numbers as well as setting up the entire shoot. Production supervisor. So if you're somebody that likes to put like things in places, like organize and put stuff in where it should be, set something up, you might be really good as a production supervisor. If you like to handle all those details and build something from the ground up, yeah, you might really like that. A lot of production supervisors become producers, but it does take a certain kind of personality to go from production supervisor to producer. The producer is just very much like in-person problem solver, very good at communication, very quick and fast with handling problems. Production supervisor gets to kind of stay in the back and handle problems. But they're not doing it so publicly with while the whole shoot is going on. They're supporting the producer. Then you've got the coordinator. And then you got the office PA. And guess what? <laughs> if you want to become a producer, that's the path. Actually, you start as a PA first. Every single producer was a PA. So you work as a production assistant but with us, we don't do it for very long, do we? No. We start as a production assistant, and then we use that job to be like, oh, hey, guys, I would love to work in the office. I would love to work on set. I would love to work with camera. I would love to. Is there any way that I can work in all these departments so that you really become well-rounded? Which is great, because the more well-rounded you are, the more you understand things that's going on on set that's going to help you when you become a producer. So from production assistant, you're like, hey, I'd love to be an office PA. How fast can that happen? Oh, so fast, super fast, right? Super fast to move to office PA because it's like, hey, you know, I, I love working in the office. I love uh, supporting and filling up paperwork and making sure we got the forms and getting stuff printed out and disseminated and calling people and putting stuff on hold. I'd love to do that. Is there any way that I could be a uh, an office PA? <laughs> They'll be like, oh, yeah. Guys, if you haven't noticed, people are super touched when you want to do something for your life and you, you um, make that extra effort to kind of put yourself in that direction and talk to them about it. They are touched. Because a lot of people, they just don't even, I don't know, they don't do anything about it. They're just like, they're on set and like, oh, hopefully somebody's going to notice and give me some opportunity. And... Uh, you know, and the thing is, is that nobody really notices. Nobody's thinking about anybody else's career too much. They're mostly thinking about the job and getting the job done. 
So you kind of, in a way, you kind of like interrupt them a little bit and like kind of give them a plan to seed there, you know? Hey, I would really love to someday, you know, learn production. Just make it like really vague. Like, don't say I'm, I'm working really hard to be, or I'm, you know, I want to be a producer. I want your job. Don't step on their toes like that. Just say it really vague and really loose. And don't don't worry if you're like, oh, am I coming across too loose? Don't worry about that. You know, just this is like no, um, it's like no pressure. <laughs> you know, kind of like that kind of conversation. Hey, you know, if there's any way that I could help out in the office, I would love to, because someday I'd really like to be a producer. Oh, it's such an easy thing to say, right? Right? Then they'll be like, aww. You're like, yeah, I'm really good at like calling. I can call and put stuff on hold. I'm really good at, you know, organizing things. Um, I can do the call sheet. I can make phone calls for you. <laughs> and they'll be like, aww. Because it's touching when somebody's like, yeah, I can do this for you. Right? Yeah. All right, so that's the production um, path if you want to become a producer and executive producer as well. If you want to be director, what's the path? Well, you start off PA so that you can meet a ton of people. Uh-huh, yeah. And then what do you do? You direct. You direct all the time. No, it's going to be your free stuff. It's going to be stuff that you're funding yourself, which is why you don't want to get in debt with film school. And you don't want to crowdfund when you don't know what you're doing yet. I don't think. I mean, I don't, I don't like to throw away money. So I think that uh, it's best to um, work hard, work your ass off as a production assistant, work your ass off in other freelance jobs so you have a lot of money coming in, and then be directing so that you're always building your reel and having conversations with people on set about their ideas. And just be like a freaking like, whew, whew, whew. I'm a director. I'd love to direct that. Uh, what about this idea? Hey, let's write this up. Let's shoot this this weekend. Dire if you're a director, like in your body, ideas are exploding out of your head all the time, right? You want to shoot that stuff because that's what you do. You're a director. And you're looking for what's comedy. You're looking for what's drama, you're looking for ideas, you're looking for scripts, you're looking for an arc of a story, you're studying writing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not just directing the actors. It's like the main thing when you talk to these, I'm sure you've been to film festivals, the main thing that they say is that what's missing with a lot of the films that are submitted is that there's no story. Like it's kind of a story, but it's not really a developed story. And they're like, it's so, it's, it's kind of annoying for them. It's like, oh, come on. And uh, cause you know, when you've been doing something for like 10 years or you know, even 20 years, you can see things clearly. And people are like, so that, that are submitting these things think that they're, you know, they shoot it beautifully and it's really greatly shot. And they're like, that's going to get my career started. But when there's not enough of a story, oh no, it's not because <laughs> these days everything can be shot nicely, you know? So. Becoming a director is seeing people direct on set and it's really studying the story, it's writing, it's developing your talents all the time. And you gotta shoot stuff all the time if you're a director. Now maybe you're like, I wanna be a director, but you might find when you're on set, you're like, that's maybe it's not me. I was like, a wildlife filmmaker. Well, it took me two years to realize, oh, that's not me. I don't really wanna sit in the bush making hardly any money, freezing my ass off, I would rather make a ton of money and then just go and have uh, have those experiences by paying the money for it. <laughs> you know, I would rather just make a ton of money and then if I want to go to Patagonia and sit in a blind, I can do that. I can just pay for it instead of like going there. I, I, it just was like, you know, Janet, what do you look at? What do you actually look at the truth here? You are not like enjoying getting up at 4:30 a.m. to sit in a blind all day long to shoot like some animal. You know, I mean, you liked the idea of the lifestyle, you liked it, but it's not like through and through like the, the what real wildlife, the real wildlife filmmakers. Oh, they're just like, they love it. Like, it's just like, oh, and then the little behavior and now they're doing this and they're getting ready to mate now. Nah, nah, nah. And they're just so into it. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay. So I realized that. And that's very valuable. But the, the wildlife filmmaking got me into the whole thing because I'm like, I want that life of travel. 
So uh, it's good if you're like, okay, I, I wanted to do this. And you're like, after you do it for a while and you see it, you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I really want to do that now, if I want that life that goes with that anymore. Maybe that's not me, but there's something, maybe there's something better for me. So what are some other jobs? Well, there is the AD job, assistant director. That's running the set. So um, that's like the first AD. There's the first AD who's the one that's running the set. The first AD's name is Daddy on set. You know why it's Daddy? Because they're running the set and you go to Daddy to ask questions. You know, hey, what's coming up next? Well, hopefully you've read the, the, the storyboard so you kind of know what's coming up next. You read the schedule. Um, but uh, you're like, okay, you might have some questions. You know, when is this happening? Are we still doing that shot? Uh, you know, specific things. Does he walk from here to there? Are we going to be moving with that shot? Does the car move? Stuff like that. So daddy answers all those questions to help you get ready because daddy wants the day to get shot and get going. Now don't call the AD daddy. But it's just kind of a fun fact that, <laughs> that, that that's what the, well, that's how people look at the first AD. First AD can scare you though, because they can sometimes be very loud and vocal. And they can bark at people. Hey, I need more prayers of And it's just stress talking. All of the, what, the pressure of them to move that, that shoot forward, it's all on their shoulders. So... <laughs> It's, I mean, it doesn't fall on anybody else's shoulders but them. So that's why. Now, sometimes they even will like be barking at people because they think that if they don't, they look like a weak AD and then they'll get fired. So they're like, hey, I got to run this fucking set. So, and then you talk to them later and you're like, oh my God, you're so intimidating. And they talk to them later and they're just like, oh yeah, this weekend we're going to go to Catalina and the summer. And what about you? And, they're so, and you're like, huh? Is that the same person? Yeah, just the way they do their job. So always give people the benefit of the job, doubt and just know, stress talking. So 80, so there's first 80, there's a second 80, there's a second second 80, and the second 80 and the second second are supporting the first 80. And they're helping with background and they're helping with bringing talent to set. And are they ready? Out of, are they out of hair and makeup? Are they ready to come to set? Bring them to set. You know, tell them it's going to be five more minutes, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the AD department. ADs will hire PAs on feature films and TV shows mm -hmm. and key PAs will hire production assistants on TV shows and feature films, both will. And on commercials, production supervisor and coordinator are the ones that are typically hiring PAs. I know it's a little bit different, different, different. Well, that's the way it is, the way it is. But now you know who are the ones that hire. So if you're on a commercial set and you talk to an AD, they can, and you're like, hey, can you get me on? You're like, I know that you don't normally hire PAs, but um, th th they will say, um, yeah, I'll put you on my list. Because sometimes they can recommend you. And well, they can, they really can recommend you no matter what. You know, hey, th these are my people. I'd really like to have these people and ask for you. ADs have that power because look, they're running the set. They need to be able to choose the production assistants that support them, right? Now the AD department, the AD hires the second AD and the second second. So that person hires that person. Oh, the producer hires the production supervisor and the coordinator. The production supervisor and the coordinator are usually hired, yes, by the producer. Office PA is hired by any of these guys. Executive producer is hired by the owner of the company. And the director is signed with the company, possibly by the executive producer who also could be owning the company. Okay, so that's AD department. Let's look at what other departments there are on set. Okay. We have camera, <laughs> camera department. This is a very, oh, when I look at these call sheets, I'm like, I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh, I love these people. I haven't seen Damien for a while. Damien, the DP on this particular call sheet was here at my house shooting a hotels.com commercial here. Yeah. And it was so fun. Get up at like 
six in the morning and the trucks come out, the trucks roll in. I'm like, oh my God, because I know they're coming to shoot at my house. I'm like, oh my God. And then you see the camera carts roll in and you're like, oh my God, that's Clint. Oh my God, that's Marty. Oh, there's Damien. Hey, and they're like, they're like, hey, Janet, uh, hey, where should we set up? Where, where, where does the AD w want us to set up? Because they think I'm working on it doing sound. And I'm like, I don't know. You got to check with them. And they're like, huh? I'm like, I'm not working on this thing. This is my house that you're shooting at. They're like, are you fucking kidding me? You live here? What? Then they're always like, I'm doing the, I, I, I chose the wrong job. I should, I should be, I should be a sound mixer. Holy shit. This is your house. That's what they say. Anyway, the, those, that whole department. <laughs> but you know, you just, you just start to love these people. Okay. So now we got camera department, camera. And we got the head of the camera department is the DP or director of photography, DOP, DP, DOP. And then you got camera operators. Now the DP could be the camera operator or could be not the camera operator. D they could be the same person or they could hire separate camera operators. It just depends on how big the shoot is and the, how big the DP is. You know, the DP could be like, no, I don't can't, I don't operate. I just DP. Okay, that's fine. So then you got camera operators, and then you got not every shoot, but Steadicam. I'm working with Jimmy Kimmel this weekend, next weekend, Sunday, and uh, we're gonna have Steadicam. Steadicam. And then you got, what else you got? You got the first ACs, first assistant camera. You got the second assistant camera. It's not one AC, it's first, second. AC, first assistant camera pulls focus and the first assistant camera knows the camera like the back of their hand. The DP is not setting up the camera. It's the first assistant camera that's setting up that camera. If there's any problem with the camera, that person is fixing it. Software, whatever it is, batteries, the lens is not moving right, the whatever it is, oh, they're responsible. Yeah, big job. Second AC is doing slating is keeping everything organized, is getting the lenses, is cleaning the lenses, putting away the lenses, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And then you got camera PA. Not always do you have a camera PA, but uh, you know, if you're like, hey, is there any way that I could um, help with the camera today uh, as a camera PA? Just thought I would check. Is there any way? <laughs> and you might become a camera PA. If they say, no, no, we really need you for other things, you're like, okay, cool. Well, I just thought I'd ask, but that's awesome. Here to help, whatever, you, whatever we need, ready to work. It's such a great line. And then we've got DIT. And DIT is taking the footage, the media, putting it in, the, in the computers, coloring it, showing the DP with the big monitors, what we're shooting and how it's looking and making sure it's all matching. Is that reflection too bad? Is this thing, I think the way it's gonna work. Sometimes mistakes come up or stuff that they shoot it. Oh, it looks too dark. <sighs> yeah, I was on a big shoot and uh, the, the uh, agency and the client was like, we're worried about this footage. It all looks too dark. And the DIT's like, well, we can bring it up. Yeah, but isn't then it's gonna have that squashed look and, and the DP's like, oh, it's fine. And then they're like, but we could shoot it again. And they're just, and not shoot it again. Uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. <sighs> but it happens. Now at those moments, believe me, it's not the time to have any conversations with anybody. Oh no, they're shit bricks. I'm just like, Ooh, I think I'll just like give them good vibes. <laughs> it's rough. Rough when there's complaints on set and it's your fucking ass. Yes. Anyway, they shot it again. That's what happened on that day. <laughs> but yeah, the entire camera department, all these people are filmmakers. That means that with jo the job that you want to do, uh, you may want to talk to these people. Why? Because you can work on their stuff, their stuff that they're doing on the weekends. Because that second AC is also a director, possibly. The DIT is also a director, possibly. Shooting stuff on the weekends. You might want to act in it. You might want to AD it. You might want to help out with second camera. You want to get some camera experience. You might want to do voiceover for it. So just talk to them, find out what they got going on. And perhaps you can dig up and find some opportunities that you can work it on, work on it. 
Yeah. All right, so now the reason why I asked what kind of jobs that you are doing is basically just for you to realize that you've done some hard jobs. You've got a lot of skills from those jobs. You got administrative skills, you got talking to people skills, you got figure it out skills, don't you? You got doing hard stuff skills, you've got discipline skills, don't you? It's gonna help you with all these jobs. You can do any job. Just because you have the skill in the office, in accounting, in the retail, what, just because you have the skill though doesn't mean that you have to use that and get into that department. Like, just because you're accounting doesn't mean, oh, I should be working in the office. No, you don't have to. You know, time is money. You can, instead, if you're like accounting, you can go into camera. Like, no, I don't want to have anything to do with anything office. I just want to go straight into camera. That's fine. Okay, so camera, we got, we got other departments here. Now say we're writers. Say we're writers and we're directors and we just want to be on set all the time. If you're a writer or director, you don't arrive on set enough as a writer or director, typically. So you just so in order to build your base, you want to be on set all the time. Well, you could work in camera. That definitely camera, slam dunk for camera for writers or directors. And of course, DPs and camera video people. But there's also art department. Art department is a huge department. Our department is, well, this is a small call sheet and there's that many people here to here. And let's look at this one. Oh, that's another small one. Let me look at this one. I've got so many of these. Oh, interesting. This is a big call sheet, but our department is not that big. No, it's not. It's only here to here. Anyway, our department is production designer. That's ahead of the art department. And that person gets hired from the director. Boom. And then the production designer brings in their entire team, which it could be the art director. It's going to be the lead man. It's going to be the prop master. It's going to be uh, set dressers. So they're bringing in, it can be anywhere from five to 20 people. All these different positions. Now, art department's great because you can be a set dresser pretty quick. You talk to the art department, hey, I'd love to someday be um, on, yeah, on set dresser. Okay, we, on this one here it says production designer, assistant art director, decorator, lead set decorator, on set decorator, driver set dresser. And those are the jobs. And no prop master. Okay, that was that job. And let's look at this one. This one. Production designer, art coordinator, decorator, prop master, lead man, driver. Yeah, that's that one. So yeah, the production designer hires every, now if you hires everybody. So if you want to work in the art department, which is a great department, they're such nice people. They're so sweet. They're such teamwork people. Always. I mean, I'm, I don't know what it is about that department, but they're always just super freaking sweet. Maybe they they're under pressure, but not under the same kind of pressure as the camera department. Just a different kind of pressure. Like, okay, there's they they don't have people going, hey, when's that camera gonna be ready? They're like, oh yeah, we're getting this ready, getting this, setting that. So um, these jobs are six fifty for ten as a set dresser, you know, uh, for twelve. Six fifty for twelve is a set dresser, yeah. And these jobs get you on sets consistently, working with the art department and with people, so you can have conversations. And if you're a writer and a director, this is a great department to be in because there's consistent work. They need a lot of people. And they're such great people. They're so nice. Love them. Every time I'm like walking, you know, towards the catering truck and there's somebody there and I'm like, and you talk to them and you're just like, you were so cool. I'm like, what department are you? And they're like, art department. I'm like, of course. I always love art department people. <laughs> they're like, well, thank you. All right, so that's a great department. You don't have to be like, creative and artistic oh no you just have to want to help out and be part of a team and help set up the shot and put stuff away move stuff around mm -hmm. well we got grip and electric grip and electric again very teamwork jobs grip electric i know you can't read this but just for fun I'm writing it. Grip and electric, uh, teamwork jobs, and everybody, they're setting up all the lights, they're wrapping up the cables, they're finding electricity, they're putting out the lunch boxes, which are the electrical boxes everybody plugs into. 
and they're setting up the grips equipment, the C-stands, and bringing in the carts. Oh, we need another thing. We need another stinger. Okay. So if you like teamwork, that's also a good department to be in. Now, if you want to be a director, would you want to work as a electrician or a grip? You could. I just don't see that very often. Um, I don't really know why, <laughs> but you know, I see gaffers direct. Okay. That's head of the electrical department. That's right underneath the, the DP Whoop. gaffers, but I think, and you can do whatever it is you want because you know what? It, it's you as a person that's going to determine your career. It's like you can convince anybody in the film industry of anything. They're not going to go, oh, but you're a grip. And also, you'd be like, yeah, I also grip and I'm a director. You say it like that, and they're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like that. I like you. I, I, seriously, it is that way. People are not. They, if you are like, oh, you're going to judge me, then they're going to judge you. You know, like, I'm a, I'm a grip, but I also am a director. And then, and you say it like that, they're like, oh, right, okay, well, you're trying to but it doesn't seem like you're really a director. You're like, yeah, I'm a grip and I also direct. Now they're like, oh yeah, I get it. You're a director, yeah. And you grip too, you're a hard worker, yeah. <laughs> the way of the world, guys. So get in lots of sets and you'll see. You're gonna see people that are just like, oh, I'm afraid to even say I'm a director or a writer because everybody wants to be that. And you know, you'll see people like that. But not you, because you know that how you say it, how you do it, your energy determines your whole success. Okay, so there's grip and electric. Great jobs, uh, physical jobs, teamwork jobs. If you're a fireman, that's going to be just like, you know, everybody's got their bag, their, their you know, team. It's pretty cool. And then we've got script supervisor. There's only one script usually. And that's person that is very, again, 650 for 12 or sometimes more, sometimes 600 for 10. Good rates. Got your computer, got your little place, and you're watching for continuity. You're timing the lines. There's a lot to every single one of these jobs, guys. There's none that's easy. People think boom operator. Oh, yeah, I'll just be a boom op, hold the pole. <laughs> every single job has tons of details that make you really good. But... You can definitely learn any job and learn all these details pretty fast. I mean, you know, it's going to take you a year to get like super smooth and understand all the details. But while it's during that year, you can be, you can be directing, you can be writing, you can be producing stuff. You know, there's no reason why you're like, oh, I can only do that job. No, you can be doing that, just learning like crazy. Envir you know, it's just such a creative environment. So script supervisor, some people might like that job. Not me. I can't do that job. That does not fit my personality. <laughs> That's what Zuli wants to do, script supervisor. Yeah, she's like, that fits my personality. I think so. I think it does. All right, then there is hair and makeup. There's the vanities, hair, makeup. Now on the smaller shoots, you do both probably, but on the bigger shoots, they're gonna be separate hair and makeup people. They don't have time to have you do hair. Have you do both? Like, okay, now we're gonna do the makeup. We done the hair. No, and there will be multiple hair and makeup. There'll be the key, the the, the head of the department. Then they're gonna hire all their assistants. Sometimes there's a lot of hair and a lot of makeup. So if you want to learn that, who are you gonna learn it from? You're gonna start out as a PA. And you're gonna be like, hey, um, I actually love hair. If you guys need an assistant, uh, you know, hit me up. Hit me up. I'm actually doing something this weekend where I'm doing hair for a short film. You want to see some of my pictures from my last shoots? Oh, I did this and this and this. And oh, I use this product. Now, maybe how you open this conversation is you're like, um, yeah, I was on this last shoot and this certain thing happened and there was flyaways and her hair was crazy. And what do you do? What kind of product do you use? You ask a question. So you start to develop mentors on set by doing it yourself and asking very insightful questions that you experienced. They will take you under their wing like crazy and teach you all day long, and then they'll hire you as an assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to do it, and then ask them a question, and then they will hire you as that. Oh, so simple, right? Our hair and makeup, and then there's costumes. 
costumes, which is wardrobe, costume designer, also wardrobe supervisor, same job. And that's a quite a job. You are going out, you're getting the boards, you're seeing what kind of clothes everybody needs, what costumes they need. And then you gotta go shopping and get it all together and have different options. And then you gotta look at what the action is and look at the day and look at what we're shooting because maybe the person is gonna sweat through the shirt several times. You better have several sh shirts. And you might have to sew them and make sure that they are fitting properly or open them up, I mean, things like that. And then your biggest bane is when actors say, oh, I'm a size this, and they're not. And you're like, oh, guys, this is not like, you can't play around with this stuff. You gotta tell us the accurate size that you're at. Otherwise, we're, we're fucked. This shirt doesn't fit you. Okay, so costumes. These, these people make great money. Uh, it's hard work you're dealing with clothes, sometimes lots of clothes, stinky clothes, you know, picking them up, at a rental costume place sometimes, and uh, then returning them, picking up, returning them. But it's a great job. It's a great job. You get to know, as a costume designer, you get to know the directors and the producers really well. Why? The reason why is because you're there in pre-production. You're there interfacing all the time with them during the shoot. And then you're often there on the wrap days. Just the more interaction that the job has, the tighter you get with your people, with those people. The way it goes, which is cool. I like it. Let's see, what else we got here? We got location manager. And that is a great job, 650 for 12 typically. And they're finding the locations and they're talking to people, making sure everybody's happy while we're shooting dealing with any problems. You've got transpo, gang boss, van driver, people moving people around. Gang boss tells everybody where to park. And how do they know? Are they making it up, pulling it out of their ass? Uh, no, they were there during the scout day to make a decision where it's so important so that people can get in quickly, unload it, get set up and make the shoot. It's such an important job, gang boss. Um, on this, so this is, these are all the PAs on this shoot here. Office PAs on top and then all the other ones. Mm -hmm. And I think we got all the departments here. So the very top, my hand's getting all <laughs> dirty. You got the director, president partner, managing director partner, executive producer. Okay, those are all the top ones. Then we got head of production. Per that person's not typically on set, but th that's there. Then you got UPM, which is production super, oh, UPM, interesting. Okay, well the UPM on this shoot is Anton, who um, has ALS now and uh, can't even topic move his entire body. He's probably gonna pass pretty soon. And that, that's the person that I had um, the party this year. Uh, on May 30th, I had Anton, and he's in a, he's a wheelchair, and he can't move anything. Uh, ALS, fucking bad. Anyway, all of, all, uh, pretty much all the people on this call sheet, <clears throat> they were here at this house and to celebrate his life while well, he's still alive. He's still alive, but I emailed him last week, and I didn't hear back. And uh, so I... Uh, texted his wife, Mari, and I'm like, I didn't hear back. Usually I hear back. And she said, yeah, he can't move his fingers anymore. And he doesn't want to use the eye movements to type or do anything. He's refusing to do that. So she's like, so he can't communicate. I'm like, oh, fuck me. Yeah. It's like at that point, you're just like, come on, just let, let, him, let him die, you know? I'm sure he's just like, just let me die, okay? And they die. Not to bring you all down, but it's life, right? And this is why you got to love these people when you work with them. He was, you know, the producer hired me for so many years. Um, yeah, um, yeah, ALS, you die from exhaustion. Because just to breathe, just to swallow, just to eat, just to do anything requires so much focus and concentration. You just... That's what he said. He's, he's wrote in a blog and he's like, you die from exhaustion. So uh, that's what I have to look forward to everybody. So go out there and enjoy your life today.
<laughs> okay, so Anton. All right, and so we got Anton, who's the UPM. You got the production supervisor, the assistant production supervisor, which is the same thing as a coordinator. Then you got the first AD and the second AD. There's no second second AD on this shoot. Then you got the camera department, you got the electric department, you got the grip department, you got the art department, you got hair, makeup, wardrobe, you got VTR, sound, and scripty. Usually that they put them together in this section here. You got additional support, which is location manager, gang boss, van driver, van driver, production motorhome driver, catering chef, craft services, medic, studio teacher. And then you got production assistant, office PA, and then it's like, I don't know, 10 PAs here. And you got your client, you got the agency, you got creative director and agency, more art director, copywriter, these are people from the agency. Uh, and then you got vendors here, all the vendors. Camera rental, car prep, casting, which would be the background casting companies, casting facility, the caterer, the condor rental, condor. The dolly came from Fisher, extras, caching came, extras casting came from Idell James Casting Company, the generator came from this one place, the grip equipment came from, you know, so they'll have all of the departments. Sound, I'm down here too, they got the sound equipment from me. And who's uh, interfacing with all these people? The production supervisor, yeah, to negotiate how much you're going to charge us to shoot this thing. So that is fun, isn't it? Okay. What questions do we have? Oh, sewing department. <laughs> Thanks. Sound department. VTR. By the way, VTR, it comes under sound. I am the department head. VTR works for me, but no, not really. It doesn't. He doesn't. Or she doesn't. VTR sound is the department head though, actually, um, according to the union. So the sound department is sound mixer. That's what I do. Boom operator. I hire. Uh, VTR, I, I have nothing to do with hiring them. Who hires them? The production supervisor, the producer, the director says, this is my person. Who hires me? The producer, the production supervisor, the director, same thing. They're like, this is my sound person. This is my VTR person. This is my DP. This is my... Um, my uh, costume person, this is my AD. Yeah, they, they, it just comes from multiple different people. But if the director says, these are my people and gives them a list, then the production supervisor hires everybody there. You know, you get to know people over years and you're like, I will, these are my people. Sometimes they change them up. This is why you're as good as your last job because they can be like, oh, uh, they didn't do that well last, on the last shoot. And then let's see what, who else there is to do one of the jobs. And then you just lost that client. It can happen. <laughs> Hopefully not. But you that's you'll hear Anton say, you know, there's a lot of people that would love to do my job. So um, I just keep that in mind. It's like whenever I want to be get a little lazy, I'm like, hey, there's a lot of people that would love to have my job. <laughs> and in a way we're like, oh no, don't say that. I just want to know that it's gonna be easy all the time. Well it's, he just says it just to stay on, you know, stay on your game, right? Don't uh, show up a little bit late or like be like, oh, I'm tired today, you know. We're there to do a job. You can forget that because it's such a social environment. It's so much fun. You know, you're just like, hey, party. Oh, I'm going to have that conversation. You're not thinking about the shot that got to get set up. And then you're late, or you rush in, or you forgot something back of the truck, and now they're waiting, and now you look, you're running around like a chicken, and you know, not good, not good. And so, believe me, I speak from experience. It's happened to me many times <laughs> where I uh, have, have not been on my game. Now, what happens? So, and I wrap my, you better be on your game. Don't take this for granted. There's a lot of people that want your job. I'm like, come okay, on, okay. Yeah, so sound, VTR. And script, is there anything I've missed? You'll tell me. Who helps with casting? Um, well, they have a casting, okay, background casting is certain, usually a company that they just hire and say, this is the kind of background actors that we need, okay. Now, as far as the principal actors, they hire a casting director that 
puts out the breakdowns and brings in the actors and they do a casting session and they, it's the casting director with the actors and then there's callbacks and that's when everybody gets involved the director the producer they come back for callbacks now if they do it virtually a lot of times they're doing the self-taping so they're uh, you're bringing back that you're doing the self-taping and then they take a look at the tapes and they decide who's going to get the role and oftentimes when you do a performance for the uh, audition they're like they're they're looking at this this the scene that they're shooting and they're like oh we like how this person did that certain thing well that's what we want and everybody looks at the performance and they're you know everybody could be the client the agency the executives if it's like a TV show they all look at it and they're like oh, I like how they did that thing and then when you do that thing on camera that day they want you to do what you did in the audition I've heard so you're here all the time just do it the way you did in the audition. And what that means is that you're not doing it like you did it in the audition. Can you please do it like you did it in the audition? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. How was I? How did I do that? Um, yeah. So who helps with casting is a casting director. The casting director may separately have their own people. So they're going to have maybe their casting assistants, and they work for the casting director. And as a production assistant, you can ask if you can help out with casting. You can ask if you can be there when they're doing it live. Now with the self-taping, it may not happen that they're all sitting there doing live auditions, so now there's not the room for you to be there. So what you wanna do, if you wanna get involved in casting, is you want to work in production so that you know people and you know your shit and you, you, you've got a lot of different exposure. Then you wanna contact the casting companies directly and say, hey, I work in production, and I'd also love to, I'm also an actor, I would also love to help you guys in casting. So do you need any help? I can, and then give them some, some suggestions. Uh, I can organize self tapes, I can do, arrange phone calls, I can arrange whatever it is that you need. I can arrange, I can organize your computer, whatever, I can do reader, I can do whatever you need. I can shoot it, that's for in-person stuff. But you'll use your production work to, to help out with the casting. Anyway, I'm glad that you're enjoying these calls. I'm really glad. And you're in the group. You see examples of people succeeding out there. And, you know, the mentors, they're freaking working. So I'm like, guys, come back and post what you're doing. And sometimes I get them to do it, you know, but not always. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I but, haven't posted anything in a long time. See? Had, like a very busy, like, six months. <laughs> see? You're working on these major TV shows and then you're not telling us, but, but you are, but you come on, you are, you are, you're yeah, with us. Yeah, no, I'm glad we were able to do like a Sunday. I've worked like the last, I've worked the last three Sundays. So that's why I haven't been here. Yeah. But thankfully, like, this is finally like a day off for me because I worked yesterday. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Enjoy it. And just say no to donuts. I, uh, uh, the hours are better. <laughs> No, no, no. Donuts going nowhere. Lily used to work at a donut shop. And one of our calls, like, it was like like a month ago. She's like, just say no to donuts. And we're all like, because she's like, that's my, that was my job that I hung on to for way too long. And we're like, oh my God, I love that. Just say no to donuts. <laughs> and so it's just the best. It's that, that's going to stick with us forever, Lily. Just say no to donuts. You, you, you pretty much just nailed like leaving the survival job that is taking way too much of your life and uh, boom getting out of there yeah i know i don't know what i'm gonna do like right after this job ends because i definitely need a break well whatever you want to uh -huh. do you can do that um and uh but i will coach you if you want to get in the art department to call some production designers and some lead men and uh you know uh just tell them i would love to work with you guys i've been working on major shows been doing COVID compliance. I've been doing health s safety stuff, which is a lot of paperwork and a lot of uh, organizing, and you got to do it accurately. Um, and I, I just love our department. I just would love to work with you guys. So keep me in mind, would you please? And yeah, thank see, you. yeah, yeah, that's what you could say to them. And just g directly call them. You know, hey, I know that you work with so and so. I work with them too. You know, use the look at the call sheets. Use the associations. I've worked on this show. I was working with this guy. I know that you have to, you know, do a little research. And then when you call them, and I would call them, 
uh, yeah, that's exactly what you say. Hey, I worked on this show. I know you work with this person too. Um, I've been working in safety, working in COVID compliance, uh, you know, pretty demanding job, but you know where my heart is? It's art department. I would love to work with you guys. Now, I know you got your people, but if you need somebody, if you, you know, please think of me. Just can I send my information over to you? And they're like, oh yeah, sure. They'll love you. Now, they, they do have their people, but the fact that you called them <laughs> means a lot because most people don't do that. Most people are too scared to call or just, eh, I don't know. I'll put it off. I don't know. It makes me seem desperate. I don't really want to. let the, the, Guys, we're freelancers. You are supposed to call people. You are supposed to reach out to them. You are supposed to make happen what you need to make happen. Look at the freaking directors. Look at what they have to do in order to work. Tremendous like go-getters, like total, like uh, they, they put together treatments and sell and do conference calls and sell their concept again and again and again. And then they get awarded one and they got one and they do that job. And then they might do 10 more that they don't get. So, you know, that's a direct life of a director. That's what a, that's that a good director, you know, uh, is really good at that, really good at selling their ideas. And then they work a lot. So they are hustling. The executive producer is hustling for business. The producer's hustling. Everybody's hustling. So, you know, hustle. <laughs> You're a freelancer. You're supposed to. And feel good about it, too, you know? My plan was to move out to L.A. I didn't really have much of a plan beyond that. I was a project manager. I helped other people achieve their dreams. And after a few years of that, I started to realize I wasn't working on my dreams. I worked at Apple. I worked at the Genius Bar for four and a half years. Yeah, it was great. I was making money, but I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I felt very stuck. I was in the audiovisual industry for 15 years. So I had gone to film school for about three, four years. You feel like you're working on a film set and everyone's so you know, enthralled in the project, but nobody could actually figure out like how to actually get in the industry. Two or three years after film school, I'm still twiddling my thumbs, sitting on a degree, wondering how the heck do I get in? I wouldn't have even believed it if you told me three years ago that I would have worked on these productions. Stranger Things season three, MacGyver seasons two and three, The Resident seasons one and two, Legacies, The Vampire Diaries, First Man. I just worked on a feature film recently called Son of the South. I've done sound mixing, first assistant director, second assistant director. I've been a grip, I've been a gaffing PA, a camera PA, and a host. Oh, I've done acting too. I've already got cast into a web series up in Phoenix that is paid. I'm actually going to be going there on September 18th and 19th. Um, I've been cast in a, a feature that's going to be shot here as well as up in Phoenix. Um, five pages of uh, lines, which is awesome. And that's paid as well. I worked for Discovery Plus. I worked for MTV, TLC, uh, Animal Planet. Most recently, the Oprah interview with Harry and Meghan Markle, HBO Max show called Full Bloom, Canine Intervention, MTV Ghosted, Ninja Warrior, Ellen's Next Greatest Designer. America's Got Talent was the show that actually brought me out to Los Angeles. Bug Juice, which is for Disney Channel out in Maine. I worked on um, Treehouse Masters in Pennsylvania. I've been travel coordinating for the past year and a half on a multitude of game shows, travel shows, Gordon Ramsay shows. Like, I worked with Kevin Hart, with Snoop Dogg. Um, oh my gosh, Lance Bass, like a whole bunch of crazy A-listers that you wouldn't even think you're like literally this close to. If you have no idea how the film business works and you are trying to ask me like, oh, how did you get started? Like you need training. I studied it vigilantly. Like I, I, I treated it like it was a school. Friends in film genuinely, what I tell everyone, Janet does not give you jobs. Janet shows you how to find the jobs. She shows you how to get on those jobs. And ultimately, she's teaching you how to be in demand. I've hardly actually applied for anything. Even the jobs that I've applied for, it's people referring me saying, hey, they're waiting for your resume. Go ahead and submit it so they can give you an interview. I'm not the one looking for these jobs. I'm not the one, hi, I saw you had this 
job posted like I'm in demand. Mentors pay for themselves in so many ways, but more than anything, it's save, it, it saves you grief, it saves you lost time, it saves you money. She walked me through step by step. Um, within about a year and a half, I got into the union. Uh, within a year, two years, I started working on TV shows and then I actually just finished my uh, the first theatrical feature uh, with 20th Century Fox within three and a half years of this beautiful woman right here getting me into the industry.